All right. So here's my pre presentation. Okay. So single loop digital controllers 310301F. I'll hide that out of here. Whoops. So this one that just come up now, uh, this will be your Yokogawa, and it's a single loop controller that we'll be using in lab. We'll be talking about that. This one here down here is, is the old Moore controllers um, where they had a whole bunch of um, uh, basically um, indicators and uh, LCDs and, put, and buttons on the front, and we used to control everything from there. So the single loop digital controller. So moving on. The objectives are to describe the operation of a single loop digital controller and describe the function and applications of the single loop digital controllers. So overview, again, once, once upon a time, long time ago, uh, we used to use single loop digital controllers to run the whole plant. And I'll show you a couple pictures here where you can see um, what it looked like. And now with, with what we use for the control rooms is DCSs and PLCs to do this job. It says there, however, occasions when we use single loop digital controllers are, that are practical. And that's when, when you're only controlling one loop. Small farming operations or batch processes is a couple examples of that. So this is what it looked like. Now, each one of these is a controller. You can see on this, like this whole big board. Up here, we have um, enunciation panels up here. So if there was a... If there was a uh, an error or something, uh, these these enunciation panels would light up and they'd flash and they'd make noises and all this kind of stuff. But as you can see, each one of these things is controlling a single loop in a plant. So this is a fairly big plant in this case because you can just look at all these single loop controllers on here. The other thing they used to do too is, so between the controllers, um, there was no way of telling, you know, which controller work with which chart and all that kind of stuff and if you can see on this uh, console here you can see there's there's these tapes and the tape goes to the different different buttons and all that kind of stuff for the single loop controller so that's what it kind of looked like so I've got a single control loop here and then it goes over to a valve two valves and it goes up and you know things like that so this is old stuff and I don't know if you guys have ever run across this in any of the control rooms that you've seen and here's what the operator used to look like. <laughs> so you can see here again, too, is all these are single loop digital controllers. And each one is a single loop. So that's why there's so many, so many uh, loop controllers on here, single loop digital controllers. So purpose of the controllers, maintain a process at set point so we can do other stuff. Loop controllers take an input usually from transmitter, apply mathematical al algorithms to it and provide output to the final control element to maintain a set point. And of course, my FCE is remembering first year is a final control element, normally a valve, but it could be something else. So single loop digital controllers were used to describe a single loop controller that was neither pneumatic or analog, right? Because it's a digital controller. So most single loop controllers we use now are digital. So the single loop digital controller is given a new name and it's called standalone controller. So if you see the standalone controller, it's the same thing as a single loop digital controller, except now we can use pneumatics with these. Though in theory, they are for the single loop. In reality, many of these new ones, even the ones you guys are gonna use in the lab, they can, they can manage several loops. So here's what it looks like. So the single loop digital controller features. Um, we have a faceplate, and the display shows set point PV and CO. So if you look at these bar graphs here, you got a set point for this is my set point, and this is my PV, and this will be my control output. So it actually has bar graphs on here that show you that, right? Parameters. We have pro, um, programmable buttons, so all the buttons are down here. These are the configuration keys, so we can configuration, uh, we can configure our controller depending on what we're using, whether it be a uh, something like a discrete or something like um, an analog signal. So communication, digital communication options between other devices, computers, and or PLC. So now they have these did, now these can be tied into each other. Um, again, you probably never see them and probably never will, uh, on, especially on new plants because they're single loop. 
the auto manual button. So we've all, we already know what this auto manual button does. If I'm going to make changes to the loop or if I'm going to make changes uh, um, in my configuration keys, I can take that and I can put this into um, manual. And when I put the loop into manual, then I can work on it without any disrupting the, the, the loop itself. So this is the button here is this auto manual. It's auto and manual. Push that button. Uh, right now you can see that's that light is on so it's an automatic but however if i'm doing some work on that loop i can put it in manual and then i can ma uh, maintain um, the loop as far as running uh, and consistent to a set point that i put in so that auto manual button is really really important acknowledge like so this is um my acknowledge button here so if i've got the I've got the LCD display or whatever. If I've got an error in my in my single loop digital controller, I can just acknowledge it. And then the bar graphs, of course, one for set point, one for uh, process variable, and one for controller output. So networking now um, now because now they're more advanced and um, we're capable of communicating with each, with each other. This allows for more advanced process control strategies like cascade and selective control. So here you got an Ethernet cable to each one of these SACs. Um, and then, again, this is all, this stuff is fairly old too because basically we use uh, DCS now. This is just showing you a pressure transmitter and it comes up and moves. So this is this single loop controller or standalone controller is hooked up to three other standalone controllers through an Ethernet cable, goes to the computer, we also have an Ethernet mod bridge. Um, and that's kind of what they look like when they're networking. Not much to them. Have you guys ever seen a single loop digital controller yet? No, actually. No. I, I, don't, I don't know if you ever will, but... I've seen um, a few at uh, some older facilities that we work at. You have, eh? Okay, good. Yeah. Excellent. Mostly just level, like tank level controllers and such. Yeah, and then that's it. When they when they're um, standalone controllers, they you usually they're just capable of doing one thing, like like you say levels or yeah, any of those. So the function input signals, analog will take a four to twenty milliamp signal, millivolt. We can also tie in an RTD or thermocouples. Discrete, um, those are those are pulses or switches on off on off zeros and ones and then the ability to condition the input signal output signals are analog 4 to 20 or discrete contacts and we also have the ability to condition the output signal control functions guess proportional proportional integral and PID proportional integral derivative we we have that those functions of this uh, the standalone controllers and obviously Every, every manufacturer will have different options. Um, here we've got, um, uh, we've got the Yokogawa. So that's what you'll be using in the labs. And uh, they have multifunction too. So configuration controllers must be configured for the process. Obviously, they're applied to. Configuring is a procedure of inputting the required data into the controller. Modern controllers are complicated, but there are three basic things we need to configure. Input signals. So I'll fill my input signal to that controller is milliamp, millivolt, RTD, etc. Controller algorithm, PID. We can put proportional, proportional integral, and proportional integral and derivative into these uh, controllers, standalone controllers. And then, of course, we have the output options, and they can be reverse or direct acting controllers. Input connections. The discrete and on off, open switches, closed switches, things like that. Alarms, we have enunciation panels uh, that will, the actual will, will alarm. So these can be dry contacts electrically separated from the device. So when we talk about electrically separated, we talk about this right here, this optical isolation, right? So here I've got an LED and here I've got a, a transistor. 
So it's optical isolation here. So I'm, I'm isolating the, the uh, output from the inputs. And that's very important. We call it galvanic isolation where there's no wires or no solid connections between the input and the output. And this one here just happens to be optical isolation. Pulse inputs, rapidly alternating signals. Examples of that, high or low signals that represent the state of the input. Totalizing and scaling, we can do that with these, uh, with the input connections. Converting pulse of, rates of pulses to a scaled analog frequency. Analog input connections, these are always continuously variable. They say there's, there's infinite number of inputs on an analog input signal. Example of these is one to five volts, tw uh, four to 20 milliamps. Of course, we use that 250 ohm resistor to convert it to one to five volts. Converting rate of pulses to scaled analog frequencies. Universal analog input, as we know, it's continuously variable. Slide wires or potentiometers, those are the pots we call it. Um, that's, that's um, example of an input connection. Resistance readings, so if we're looking at um, thermocouples and things like that, millivolt readings, RTD resistive temperature detectors, thermocouples, these are all examples of input connections. And it shows you on the back here, um, when we talk, look at this, it's a slide wire, so basically a potentiometer on this one. This one's an ohmic value, so it could be an RTD, millivolt value. We've got RTDs here and thermocouples. So these are the basically the inputs, universal inputs that are on the back of these controllers. Output, analog outputs, digital and analog outputs, continuously variable. So examples of those are slide waters. Again, those are potentiometers, resistance readings, millivolt readings and RTD resistive temperature detector readings, and those are outputs, and thermocouples again. So applications, SACs are used in two applications we discuss, discrete control loops, like turning on a motor or turning it off. So if it's discrete, it's on, off, on, off, and we can use a standalone controller for that. And the other one, process control loops, a standard transmitter controller, and a um, final control element combo. So you can have something like a pressure transmitter or level transmitter, whatever you were controlling, and then we control that final control element to keep that level or temperature or anything that we're doing at a set point. And that's it for, the, that's the end of this one. So you got a self-test um, on 310301F and you have the single loop digital controller worksheet. And that's all I have for you. So, Sounds good. Have a good day, Tim. Yeah, so you guys, uh, as I say, the uh, the exam is open at any time for you. Um, oh.